The universe is huge, bigger than we can really imagine. It's so big that we can't even figure out where it ends or how big it actually is, even with our best tech. But lately, we've gotten a better look, mostly thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. JWST has given us amazing views of the deepest parts of space we can see. It's helped us learn a ton and also made us think about what the universe is all about and where we fit in. Just in the area we can see, experts think there are about 2 trillion galaxies. That's based on what we've seen nearby. The whole thing could be way bigger, maybe even never-ending, stretching beyond what our telescopes can pick up. We're not just watching this giant place, we're part of it. In a way, we're how the universe sees and tries to figure itself out. It's hard to get your head around how big space is. Think about going around the world. At 70 miles per hour, it would take about two weeks. The moon is five months away, and Mars, when it's close, would be 63 years. Neptune, the farthest planet, is a 4,400-year trip. Even light, which is super fast, seems slow when you're talking about these distances. Voyager 1, a spacecraft launched way back in 77, took 35 years to get out of our solar system, even going 38,000 miles per hour. That shows how tricky it will be to travel to other stars. And our solar system is just a tiny bit of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way has around 300 billion stars, and lots of them probably have their own planets. The closest star system, Alpha Centauri, is 4.3 light years away. That means light takes 4.3 years to get to us from there. But Voyager 1 would need over 70,000 years to make the trip. Vega, a bright star pretty far off, is 64 light years away. The light we're seeing from it now started its trip in the early 60s. Our radio waves have been traveling through space for a little over 100 years, making a bubble that's barely touched a tiny bit of our galaxy. To give you a better idea, if our solar system was the size of a quarter, the Milky Way would be as big as North America. And the Milky Way is just one galaxy out of trillions. The Andromeda Galaxy, our closest big neighbor, is 2.5 million light years away and headed our way. It's moving fast, but when the Milky Way and Andromeda crash, the stars probably won't hit each other because there's so much space between them. What will likely happen is a bunch of new stars making, and things shifting around because of gravity. Zooming out even further, the Milky Way is part of a group of over 50 galaxies. That group is part of the Virgo Cluster, which has over 1,500 galaxies. And that cluster is in the Lania Supercluster, a group of about 100,000 galaxies held together by gravity. The Lania Supercluster is just one of about 10 million superclusters in the part of the universe we can see. All these structures are part of something called the cosmic web. It's like a giant net made of gas, dust, dark matter, and galaxies, with huge empty spots that can be millions of light years across. These empty spots are where new galaxies could form later on. They work with the dense parts to make up the basic layout of the universe. Inside this cosmic web, you see some wild stuff. Supernovas, when big stars explode, spread elements like carbon, oxygen, and iron out into space, which helps make new stars and planets. Black holes pull in everything around them and can even affect how galaxies form and change. Quasars, which are like really bright centers of galaxies powered by huge black holes, shine so bright they can outshine the whole galaxy. They give us a peek into what the early universe was like. Even with our awesome tech, we're still limited by what we can see. Light takes time to travel, so we can only see things where the light has had time to get to us, about 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang. That means there's a bubble we can see, and space probably keeps going beyond that, but we can't see what's there. Space is also stretching out, so far-off galaxies are moving away from us faster than light, so we'll never reach them. Some believe the real universe might be 250 times bigger than what we can see or maybe even never-ending. This makes you think. We're on a pretty normal planet going around a pretty normal star. We're able to look out at this huge place and think about where we fit in. Tools like JWST let us map the sky and look back in time. We can study old galaxies and the cosmic microwave background, which is like the earliest light there is. 
The cosmic microwave background is a lot light from 380,000 years after the Big Bang. It gives us clues about how everything started, what it's made of, and what might happen to it. Compared to the size and age of the universe, our lives and history are really short. But we can use science and our imaginations to connect the really small things to the really big things, and the present to the very beginning. JWST is the best we've got right now. It's a great piece of engineering that can show us some deep truths about the universe. It sees things other telescopes can't, like new stars, old galaxies, and planets that might be able to have life. As we keep exploring, we'll learn more and also feel more like we belong in this old, huge universe. Every new thing we find reminds us that the universe isn't just sitting there, it's always changing, and everything is connected. The atoms were made of came from stars that exploded long ago. It's all part of a long story. JWST and other telescopes will help us keep telling that story, finding things out one bit at a time. The universe wants us to learn, to wonder, and to understand that when we look at the stars, we're also learning about ourselves. The more we find out about the universe, the more we get that it's too big for us to really understand. From the tiniest particles to the biggest galaxies, things happen on a scale that's hard to imagine. JWST has let us see deeper than ever before, watching things that happened billions of years ago. It can see through dust clouds, showing us where stars and galaxies are born, what the air is like on faraway planets, and the light from the early days of the universe. Every picture it sends back is a message from a long time ago, showing us how the universe has changed and where it might be going. One of the best things JWST does is let us see galaxies that were around only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. These old galaxies help us understand how the first things in the universe came to be. We've already seen that some of these galaxies are bigger and more organized than we thought they'd be. This means the early universe was doing more than we realized. This makes us rethink how galaxies formed and how quickly things came together after the Big Bang. It also leads to new questions. What made it possible for these structures to form so fast? Did dark matter or other things we don't know about play a bigger part than we thought? Besides galaxies, JWST is also checking out exoplanets. These are planets that go around stars other than our sun. By watching how light from those stars passes through the planet's air, we can figure out what's in the air. This lets us find things like water, methane, and carbon dioxide. We might even find signs of life. JWST has already found water in the air of some exoplanets, some of which are in the right spot for there to be liquid water. These are early findings, but they're big steps toward answering a question people have been asking forever, are we alone? Even though JWST is helping us learn a lot, it also makes us feel small. When you think about the two trillion galaxies in the part of the universe we can see, each with billions of stars and maybe planets, it seems likely that there's other life out there. But we haven't found any proof yet. This is a puzzle that scientists and thinkers are still trying to figure out. Could it be that life is rare or doesn't last long? Are things just too far away for us to find each other? Or are we looking in the wrong places or at the wrong times? Thinking about these things makes you think about our place in everything. We're made of the same stuff as the universe, from stars that died a long time ago. We can ask these questions and make things like JWST to learn about nature. That's pretty amazing. As Carl Sagan said, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. Through us, the universe can be aware of itself, think about where it came from and where it might be going. This also means we have a job to do. When we see how beautiful faraway planets are, and how fragile they are, we're reminded that our own planet is special. Earth is the only place we know of where there is life. It has a thin atmosphere and delicate weather patterns. All of space is set up in a complex pattern called the cosmic web. The web is built of dust, dark matter, gas, and galaxies which are interwoven with empty spots that are very large. The empty spots are good locations to grow new galaxies later on. This creates the formation to the universe. We come across things like supernovas, dying stars that blow elements into space to create things. It creates gas, dust, galaxies, and dark matter. 
Black holes also help shape universe by swallowing matter including galaxies. Inside the quasars are also large black holes which are brighter than a galaxy itself. This allows astronomies to know how galaxies grew in the early days. Even though we're getting good at exploring, we can only see so much of the universe. Because it takes time to see light, the light we get can only get to us if it existed 13.8 billion years near the Big Bang. Space also growing. So galaxies move away from us at a speed faster than light due to stretching of space. We can't even see them. Actual universe is 250x larger than we can see. Since we reside on a simple planet and looking at a simple star, we're in a unique spot to see vastness of space. The tools we built, like JWSD, we can now see through the heavens and travel back in time. We can see ancient microwave background and galaxies. This relic is from the Big Bang, just 380,000 years, and we know how it started, shaped, and the destination. In that time and space, human lifespan is very short. We can see microscopic and macroscopic, and see present to the early days. JWSD represents the best in that respect. It tells us the truth about the universe and builds data. The infrared I can find new star and galaxies and new planets that are near suns for potential life. As we continue to push space limits and have more understanding and belonging within time and space, we can know through new learning that space is connected and alive not dead. Atoms are on stars, part of the history which grows for billions of years. Using JWSD and new space watches, we can grow in known secrets of life one light at a time. The universe lets us know, learn, to find out, that we become the stars and are ourselves. The more we learn, that it defines us in space. From small particles to giant galaxy patterns which are way beyond what we comprehend. Modern tools which are JWSD, we can gaze and see past space and time when phenomena happened billions of years back. JWSD Infrared Eye we can see past dust and in galaxy growing locations with lights that have lived long ago. Each sight it sends is a message from the distant past and tells us where the universe evolved and where it's going. One of best things is ability to see galaxies that were millions YRS after the Big Bang using JWSD. Old, compact galaxies help us know how the universe was formed. Early galaxies were more unorganized and packed challenging the prior knowledge of how it used to be. It leads to new questions. The dark matter can be a big part. We can also know planets and other stars by studying lights by seeing water and methane to let us know if life is out there. This can tell you if there is an atmosphere or water. This is one of humanity's common answers, are we all alone? One thing JWSD does is reinforce existential humility. There are estimated trillions and billions of planets and life. This makes us question why we haven't found life yet. There could be too much space and intelligent life or we could be seeing the wrong spots. We learn what is fragility and beauty of distant worlds and our own planet. Earth has the most life ever found. In that spot of nature, as Mr. Carl Sean said, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. In the consciousness, we are self-aware and we're nature, origin, laws, and destiny.